Well, hello people, and welcome back to episode 88 of Orchid Bay, if you can believe it. 88 episodes. Long, long damn time, isn't it? <laughs> There's over 100 videos and streams and specials in this playlist now. It's uh, certainly the biggest project we've ever undertaken in CS1, hasn't it? And in other further news, um, people are finally using my airport word <laughs> that I planned in. Literal months ago, uh, people are now finally starting to take this to drive under the runway, uh, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, hopefully, we'll emerge out here eventually, they won't get stuck in the tunnel. Uh, but either way, we're returning over to uh, the world of where the Cougar headquarters is here as well. We're also near Steel Hills. Because uh, I want to carry on satisfying some residential development. Currently, our most popular city in City Skylines is Ilos, uh, with 140k. And, oh, is that a deer? It is a deer. Carnivorous deer. Hunting. In its, in its natural habitat. Is it going after a cougar? We're getting distracted. Where's it going to go? Oh. Nope. <laughs> Just go back. Either way, it's clearly on the prowl for a cougar, isn't it? God forbid there should be one around here. First time we've seen a carnivorous deer for a while, isn't it? But they are here, which is nice. Anyway, um, we have some space <laughs> over here um, where I'd like to bring in some road network prep today. Um, this part of the city is really nice. We are towards the map boundary, so uh, there is a map fog. I might go get the mod to hide map fog. I think it's in hide it actually, isn't it? We might already have the mod. I'll have to check. Uh, but I want to do some road network prep around here today to prepare what is likely to be the last major significant town in Orchid Bay. And also the last major facility through here as well. Uh, there's also a train line over here as well from Carol that has just been left dead. So I think we're going to hook this in. Which will then connect this new town we're connecting with Carol, Denise and Sharon. Because all this train line runs all the way through here of course. So that should be a pretty extensive train network when we finally get it over here. And then I think in future episodes as Orchid Bay continues to wrap up we'll do something more rural with this valley over here and maybe bring the train line through it as well so we can have some rivers fields and trains to round out the city that sounds like a lot of fun doesn't it but either way let's get started shall we so first of all there's definitely a sight line i'd like to respect from here i think what i'm going to do to begin with is just bring a road out 180 degrees from here now obviously these gradients are not final we will make some better ones in a second but I'd like to make a bit of a geometric town centre and shape here that respects this kind of bow in the riverbank. So let's go for something out there and we'll give it 30 units. Seems to be a good barometer there, doesn't it? Then we can bring this down. We can do some nice curvature with the roads here. Let's do... 15 each side this should hook us in special so we can have the design there i'd also like to have some further geometry up this way we are starting to go uphill so let's try and respect that if we can let's do 10 on 145 degrees and then can we just go straight across there yeah, okay, I don't hate that. That gives us that geometry that I'm after. Um, so I really want to do road network prep today as much as anything else. So, But I would like to have some assets in here. So in our continued quest, which I'm pretty sure is doomed to fail. <laughs> so we just... I, mean, I guess we could keep redeveloping to get these assets in. But I don't think we're going to use every unit building. Which is a little bit of a shame. But we can live with it for sure. What I am thinking over here is using the oppression office as a bit of a town centre. Now how we align this, I'm not entirely sure. Possibly against this way. Oh look, there's a wolf. Hiding from the deer, I'm sure. A lot of wildlife out here, isn't there? This is where all the wildlife must be spawning now because <laughs> they're certainly not spawning anywhere else. And besides the hunting grounds, which is still home to two carnivorous deer... Oh no, three. Three can't ever stay now. Well, they're making a, a big feature in today's episode, aren't they? <laughs> they really are. Anyway, distracted again. Let's head back over to the new town. 
And please also get some name suggestions in the new town as well today. Uh, let me know what you think this one should be called. So we'll probably use the oppression office and some other varying parks in here as well. Uh, but now we have this in, I definitely want to start mapping out that train line as well, because I want this to be part of the new township here. So let's grab our rail. Now we should just be able to hop over the highway here because we are already embanked. So if we were to come this way, this might need a time lapse, I reckon. We'll see what we're like. See if we can cross over. Looks like we can just about. There's a sweet spot there. How are we clearing the highway from this point? It's just about enough, isn't it? <laughs> it's just about. Maybe a, a slight embankment needed there. Uh, but either way, let's just move this into a time lapse. I want to bring this. We'll probably tunnel it through the mountain. I think I don't really want to encroach upon the Cougar World Headquarters. So we'll see what this is like here. Let's just factor in this train line uh, coming over to this area. And absolutely fabulous we now have our orange train line that comes uh, from carol all the way back to sharon now i reckon that's probably a first person tour in there isn't it one day we'll get that set up for a future video perhaps that's a big old train line now big train commute you could actually also uh, switch at sharon onto the downtown line and head all the way back into the inner city from here via train now which is fantastic isn't it We've also got some folk. You just uh, used a road maintenance blow, can't you? I was going to say, I didn't think they'd come down to use the train station so soon. Uh, but now we have that established, let's go ahead and sort out the rest of our road network frames. So I always really love prepping these things in advance. Helps to give you some sort of sense of scale and design, I think, when you bring in into a new area, especially an area that's pretty unpopulated at the minute. So let's cut through here. Just with our slope tool, maybe even move up a size here. I'm quite happy to push a few of these cliffs out of the way. There we go. Definitely want to factor in the hills into this landscape though. Quite happy to make this a little bit of a more affluent suburb. Maybe have some houses set up here facing out into this big town square when we develop it over the next few episodes. We could. So this should now just go on a really smooth gradient right back up there. That's wonderful. I'd also like to have a road... I guess we should probably stick to these 45 degree bends. It's making it a little bit easier to navigate, isn't it? So let's do same thing over here again as well. I'll we'll have 45 degrees here. And then let's map this out now just as a gentle gradient against the uh, bank of the river here. I can imagine a bit of green belt probably flowing along here. Now, just because the... 
the riverbank is really high here we could actually start to grade this a little bit uh, which would actually give the impression that the town center is on a bit of a plinth on its own so if we were to possibly cut this back it's a pretty severe gradient but it's not one i'm averse to including so i mean how much does that actually bring the riverbank down by because they're, re they're really quite steep over here it's not something I'm usually an enormous lover of, but let's go ahead and just create a bit of a grade here. So we'll have this come all the way around. Uh, this will be a really nice riverside road, especially when we've got houses up on these hills here. So this is likely to be one of the more affluent suburbs in Orchid Bay. Pretty prestigious, very private, sort of out in the sticks vibes. Cool, so now we've got this here, let's go ahead and grade everything from the riverbank to the road without destroying the gradient too much. Just want to blend it in a little bit. Something like that, and then once we're happy, let's just give everyone a soften so it blends back in. And let's go for about... Yeah, I think. Then we'll grade this up something like that i think then once we have that in as we begin to bring down this little word we were doing just a moment ago something like that that should just allow us to sort of slide down out of the town center i think and then with all this stuff here we'll just blend that back in don't really want any of that cliff texture exposed here at least not inland anyway That's not too bad. Some of the cliffs around here are perhaps a little steep. So let's grab the same height as the junction over here. We'll set this up as where we want to land. Pretty much around there. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of switch back in here, I think. But we should be okay. That general plane is what I'm looking for. So we'll have another exit or oh, entrance into the suburb on the road here. And then this can also go... Let's just go for angle and road length here. Cool. That provides a connection. We can start getting some road networks up on this road here as well. I'd also like to explore some local road connections here as well. Um, having some action parallel with the train line here would be quite nice, I think. So let's run with that idea. Let's pop our road guideline back on while we set this up. We can come up here, connect that straight back down into what will be an arterial in and out of the town. We has a collector, isn't it, at that point? And um, is there... I mean, I wouldn't mind exploring a bit of a back road. I was thinking maybe we can hook into the Google World Headquarters, but this is a pretty private complex. It's not like I want just a random back road pouring into this, if you know what I mean. I'd quite like to keep these hills unpopulated as well. And with that in mind then, let's just go ahead and feed this up into the hillside here. Let's first of all examine our terrain. So the highest point here is going to be that plateau up there, isn't it? So let's flatten everything off to about there, I think. I think it's really important, especially with landscape like this is just that we grade everything before we start planning it's going to make things just a lot more seamless i think by the time we come to finish it all up let's just push all this down just so we're getting those nice level districts and then possibly another grade coming in here as well right would make sense so let's slope up to here and then can we just kind of push this left and right to create a bit of a grade there yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, let's also connect these two roads together now as well then. Then we'll come up here. What a way to <laughs> use up some extra nodes, right? 
Yeah, I can just imagine the node please now saying, Egg, what on earth are you doing starting a town this late? We do have about 1,400 nodes left to use at this point in the city. So we are beginning to dwindle, but we should be okay. Cool, and then up here, I um, really want to set up a lot of road frames that will hold houses that look out pretty much perfectly over this cliff face here. So let's go for that. Try and pop in where it makes sense. Making sure we're giving ourselves lots of zonable space here as well. So let's go for some more back-to-back -back zoning spaces here just so we can get that density in. And then we'll connect into the designs that we want to respect where possible. Just making sure we have as much zonable space through here. That should do. Then, of course, this suburb is infinitely expandable at the top of this way as well. So let's choose a road for coming down into this suburb here. Uh, probably four lane. I would like to tree line it, but I think we'll tree line ourselves rather than using more of the tree line roads. Then again, four lane road with wide sidewalks and trees actually probably does what I want it to do. It'll also stop people parking on here as well. Let's have this as our main collector straight into the town. Probably do it back to here as well. That should be nice. I'll just come all the way down here. Uh, it will... Let's see if we move the trees as it passes through the town centre. I think it will help highlight it a little bit more. And then, not entirely sure what's going on down here yet. Um, I would like to cross over here with another bridge. Because there isn't a bridge now for basically this distance all the way here. So, I think from an engineering and infrastructure point of view... Another one here would probably be quite welcome. So why don't we plan that in now? Of course we want to connect from this top node. Are you just going to go straight across without giving me any issues at all? Possible content creator bridge as well. We'll always explore why we're here. European two-lane stone obviously being the favourite. Or we could go for the four-lane stone, which is a little more subtle in its pillars. Okay. And again, do I really want a massive four-lane arterial through here? I probably don't. This is kind of country roads. Take me home here, isn't it? So we can have this go probably through here. And as I mentioned, in the future ending episodes of Orchid Bay, this is likely to be rivers, fields, and trains that put, traverse this bit of land as we head up into the fertile valleys of Orchid Bay down this way in the later episodes. So we'll leave that there as a reminder that's what's going to happen. And then returning back to the town centre design now, we can clearly envision where this is going to connect in here, right? Somewhere around there. So let's bring in that oppression office, which is a key asset I definitely want to include here. So let's connect that up there. So I'm pretty sure it didn't centralise, did it? So we're going to have to break the grid frame. And I'll show this again since I know so many people like it. And since So when we come in here, uh, we can see that when we snap into the grid, we occupy four squares. So what I want to do to break that is to turn off grid snapping and then occupy the opposite of that, right? We want to come right in the middle of a single grid. Let's go for about there. Doesn't have to be spot on. As long as you're roughly there, you'll be fine. You can draw that in there. And then we can see that aligns a new grid based off the one we've already got. When I place this in here now, it will align to that off-center grid, which I can then delete. And then we have a perfectly, well, well what should be perfectly aligned, um, oppression office to sit in the middle of the town plaza, which will probably look a little bit something like that, I imagine. Might even just leave it as a dead-end road up to the top of the oppression office there. Maybe something with tree lining on it. Try go for... Let's use one of the medium roads. Tree line medium. With a tasteful young linden on it. Right. And then hopefully with some tasteful yet clever surface paint to work out here. We will get involved in a little bit of detailing just because I can't help myself. Yeah, we can map all this up now with 
concrete and make a bit of a public plaza out here, right? Um, maybe just want to draw in that one there. And that way we can have concrete right up to the top. It does maintain its connection. And everyone's happy with that thing, aren't they? As a bit of a design. Um, what's actually on the back of the suppression office? It's been so long since we used this. I can't remember the last time we actually did use it. Some of the long-term OE fans will have to remind me. Um, it's stairs, isn't it, on the back of this? So I actually reckon we could probably box this entire thing in with concrete if it'll let us. And we'd have to be, I think, a little bit clever with certain applications of it, but... We should be able to get it all in, I reckon. Especially if we've got to highway roads here, we should be fine. But I think if we can just surround the thing with concrete and really give it kind of a plaza draw, some nice detail to be had out here as well. I'm pretty happy with that as a town centre concept, to be honest. So uh, we'll refine that in our detail and time lapse because it's going to be a little bit finicky. And I don't hate that at all. Uh, and then what I'd like to prepare finally as we head out of this area. Um, is just a departing train line for which we are using high speed rail from bridges and piers so we'll use that over here as well uh, how about we have you also snap into our grid here too something like that and we'll probably send this train station over here are you okay why have you broken not sure <laughs> it seems to be okay now anyway uh, and then what we will do is grab that embankment that we used over here because we know this is the perfect height to come back down to ground. Hopefully here is not going to be too obnoxious. And then we'll send this across the river where it will join up with other rural networks. So let's do this one here. Come straight back down to earth, hopefully. We'll make this a bit more of a concrete embankment. And then we can have this go 180 degrees. And we can then return to those big winding country networks. Take me home. Doesn't have the same ring to its country road, does it? Good job that songwriter wasn't the city skylines player, wasn't it? Cool. So that is what will continue away from this town, which again, as a reminder, you guys must name. So please get those comments down below. Yeah, we will name it after the favourite, but otherwise let's move into the rest of the road network time lapse, upgrading initial dirt frames into some structure, and continue to map out where we're going to zone up a lot of our hillside houses around the structure of this new town. And we'll probably chuck in some services as well, police, medical, etc. Just ready for everyone to get in. And some parking where needed, especially at the front of our train station. Trees and a little bit of terraforming and hopefully a lot of fun along the way. But otherwise, let's detail up our new town network frame. And then we'll be right back. Thank you. 
Alrighty guys, let's have a little detailing review from our roundabout, shall we? So don't forget to get name sessions down for this, this is going to be the last of the middle-aged women towns, so you guys can choose it. It has to join, of course, don't forget Sharon, Karen, Denise, the nephew, <laughs> and Carol, so don't forget to give it a name. Let down below, most voted will win. So just some. Then coming down, we have two exits off into suburban road networks, which really uh, occupy the space quite nicely. I can't wait to start getting in with some more intricate details around here as we look down toward the main town centre over here. Uh, we'll have rocks and already started planning some pathways to link people back up and to. So once we've got people living here, um, all these road networks on top of the hills should come alive. Um, really fun views. Probably go with European suburbia, I think. Maybe even actually mid-century modern. We're going for kind of a luxurious vibe here. I really love the big tree-lined street. It gives a real bit of importance down the main road, doesn't it? And I think, again, once we get uh, areas off of this, this should be wonderful. And I think once we start zoning up here as well with commercial, and we'll probably go with King Leno stuff down here, I imagine, to keep it nice. Probably integrate some pedestrian areas around here once we come into individual builds as well. Uh, over here, uh, we've just done some very light detailing. Uh, so dropped in our services, we've got fire. Medical, police, and post all on the main road. So this should look quite nice uh, once we have services leaving from here. Uh, some basic parking designs at the front of the town hall. Uh, we have just some very simple uh, parking areas here uh, with some bench props, a little food plaza truck from plazas and promenades, and then this pattern repeats on the other side, which is quite nice. Uh, then we've also got some similar designs up and out front of our train station where people are now choosing to take that train um, all the way back. It's going to be really interesting I think once this town is fully complete just how this train station functions. Our people want to going to go all the way back through that train line through uh, Carol over here then of course uh, Denise uh, then back to Sharon and then it goes all along the waterfront there doesn't it? You can see the train line back into the heart of the downtown. So uh, it's really satisfying to see kind of huge cohesive train networks now meet up with all of these little outer line towns we've been building over it's, it's ages now, isn't it? Probably since we opened 81 tiles, which was a damn long time ago. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, saved a lot of the detail around here for when we come to design the town centre. I don't want to do too much in today's episode. I'd rather have this done uh, during that episode there, but prepare the concrete space anyway. And also chuck down another unique park we have over here, which was the Fountain of Life and Death, which now sits really nicely within our big uh, geometric park here. Even the kind of clock tower or bell tower of the Oppression Hall lining up with that park, and um, that will build up here as well, and um, which should have really nice views. We'll get some nice um, is that is that animals? Oh, there's two cougars over here. Oh, I hope they stay. This would give us. A second hunting ground. If we can get these to stay here, this can be like the refuge for whatever population of cougars is left. And then, of course, we'll have the hunting grounds over here as well, um, which currently is populated with wolves, which isn't something we see overly often. So, uh, hopefully, we've managed to do <laughs> the same thing over here. Yeah, there's, there's a pack of wolves over here now, which is interesting. So, uh, anyway, yeah. We can have another hunting grounds or maybe a refuge grounds maybe uh, for all the extinct animals due to the lack of competition or natural predators of orchid bays carnivorous deer. So this spot up here um, should give a really nice viewpoint. Should be a super nice place to live. This I think once we've got it all built up, you know, really nice mountains here. You're pretty isolated from downtown as well. One of the only places you can actually sit in orchid bay and not see the downtown skyline. Uh, which really helps with that sort of concept of building kind of more of a county or a country rather than just a singular city, uh, like we've tried to do with Orchid Bay, especially its 81 tile phase. I uh, really like how all that's turned out. Uh, some pretty simple uh, rock embankment work over here as we prepare our train line to cross over the river and probably we meet up with an outer lying station for the farmlands and whatever. Uh, sits near Denise here. Sorry, this is the nephew, isn't it? My mistake. So yeah, this will all meet up around here with this in later episodes of Orchid Bay. We'll probably work on this next week, I think, this big fertile valley. If you have any ideas of what you think would work nicely in here, um, of course, get them down in the comments below. I'm always happy to squeeze as many of your guys' ideas 
into Orchid Bay for what little time it has left remaining as that node count dwindles and we will have a little check of that node count as well which we can do via our watch it panel we will have a look at the limit and see that we have moved up a percentile actually 96 percent of the node count used now and pretty much bang on 1000 nodes left to use which is a little bit sad and terrifying isn't it but getting closer every week otherwise let's thank you all so much for watching if you have enjoyed it likes comments and shares below always help grow the channel on our big march to 100,000 subscribers and we're getting super close now 95.5k at the time of this recording at less than 5,000 to go now so if you are watching the videos over and over again and you are enjoying the content please do consider subscribing and it would be super cool to hit that target this year don't forget of course by the time you guys see this we have early access to Mana Lords now, I can finally say it. So go check out the whole host of Mana Lords content that's on the channel. And there'll be a lot of that going forward as well. A massive shout out to all the patrons that support the channel. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there is links down to Patreon and Instant Gaming below where you can find polls, podcasts and previews alongside early access when possible. Otherwise, please do enjoy today's cinematics. But otherwise, I'll shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much indeed for watching. And as always... Enjoy the rest of your day.